What's up, y'all? I am Nia. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, what it do, boo? And if you're returning, thank you so much, um, y'all. Like I said, I'm still new to this, like, intro stuff. I like to just get on here and start talking. Um, you know, I like to hit y'all with the what's up, y'all. But nonetheless, y'all, today I just want to talk to y'all about some real shit, like, you know, just me growing up. And as y'all, if y'all been following my journey since I moved here to Texas, y'all would know, like, I'm really just, I have, I'm getting close to God. God saved me. God really scooped me up and saved me because he know I was headed down a path to destruction just off of being so loose and being a hog. That's what this video is basically to tell y'all about. It's about this whole whole phase and casual sex, like, a woman that truly love herself and know your, her worth is not going to just be giving her body to anybody. Like, your body is your most precious gem, like, you know. And it took, honestly, for me, my baby daddy, like, my second baby. If y'all been following the journey, y'all know, like, they are the ones who push me into God. And more so this second one, like, he really taught me a whole lot like he taught me a whole lot about knowing my worth and he always would tell me that like you ain't supposed to just be you know giving your body away like y'all he was saying y'all are women y'all are sacred y'all supposed to be you know church your bodies like i said like, nigga shut the fuck up like who is you to talk who are you you're definitely not qualified to tell me about myself but he was right you know what i'm saying and so basically i just want to just tell y'all like a bit about my story with my whole whole phase basically so as y'all know if y'all don't know y'all could go watch that video I was molested as a child um by my friend he was you know just a little boy I used to play with um he wasn't he was my age of course we was both young but you know we used to play house and stuff and you know well y'all can go watch that video so due to me being molested um Due to that, it caused me to be hypersexual. And I didn't really ever, I didn't really understand. It's just like now, it's like, it made me realize that kids really be lost and don't know. We're literally, you saw when you come out into this world, you're empty. Your head is filled with nothing until you get into an environment. That environment plays a whole part into who you become, who you are, what you do, what you allow because of what you see. And that's why me being a mom, Especially after having this second baby, it has taught me like I gotta change my ways. Cause if I don't, I'ma pass down this same behavior to my kids. My mama was a hoe, and then I'm a hoe. I'm not training my kids to be no hoes. Like I'm not training my kids to see. I don't want them to think any of this shit is okay. Any of the things I saw, I don't want them to think it's okay. I just don't want them to be introduced to sex so young. Like you know, I just really want to protect my babies and shield them from any harm you know that they can be caused like it's just it's just the safest way for me like i really take my role as a mom serious because i know how damaged and broken i am because of my own parents lack thereof so i don't want to pass on them same curses to my kids like i really want to be that mom that's why i take my mom role as the most serious role in the world because so many people are walking around damaged because of a lack thereof of parents and it doesn't matter if you were in a single household. My baby and her mom, y'all, eating her food. And of course, she gonna stop talking. I'm trying to do the video. That's why I probably should have waited until she went to sleep. But I just want to go ahead and get it done. So hopefully she be quiet. Ari! But anyways, so, um, you know, just my own experiences has taught me, like, man, like, women be good. And the men too, it's just sad to me. It's just all sad. And I'm full of resentment to my mom, to my dad, to my stepdad, to my brother in a way. Like, I feel like I just resent everybody because I felt like that lonely child. Like, that's like NBA Young Boy, his song, Lonely Child, it really hit hard. Like, it really hit hard for me because I was that lonely child. That's why I understand that boy so bad, you know. He was screaming out in the song and his mama still, y'all, it's like, how do people be screaming out for help and then y'all wonder why they're suicidal? Like, people, parents is so selfish though. Stop, if you watching this video and you are a parent, the day you decided to lay on your back and have them kids and bust that pussy open, 
the day you decided to keep the baby, the day you decided to push the baby out your pussy or have your C-section, whatever. On, from that day, your commitment to that child. They ain't, you ain't committed to no fucking man. That man ain't your husband. You you don't owe that nigga no fucking loyalty. Your loyalty is to your kid, not these fucking niggas. And I'm just, you know, as I talk to my mom and we just been talking about stuff, you know, I resent her so much. I love the shit out of her. And I know that, you know, she didn't purposely, I feel, anyway, neglect me. But it's just your own selfishness. And even when it goes back to how she was raised. But that lack thereof is what pushes out, out into the streets. Seeing my own cousins, like I lost, I just feel like I had, I lost everybody. And I blame the parents. Like I resent parents so much. Like I resent my cousin's parents, which is my uncle and my aunt. I resent them too, because if it wasn't for y'all shit, my cousins wouldn't be dead. Because they wouldn't have went out in the streets looking for fucking love that they wasn't getting at home. Nine times out of ten, we looking for love in all the wrong places because we're not getting it at home. It all starts in the house. That's why I don't play about my house. I'm not going to have drama in my house. I'm not going to be with no nigga that think we're going to be arguing and fighting and fussing in front of my kids all the time. I'm not doing none of that shit. And I know I'm typically the, well... My first baby dad to me, he was always, you You can't say nothing to him without him ready to bark soon as, you know, he'll be chill for a minute, but then he'll, he was the argument at this time. My second baby dad, he gonna just let you eat him up. He just sit there until he finally, you know, he, he talk his shit over the phone. He wasn't the type who ready to fight you in person and do all that shit. Like, even over the phone, like, he just, he not a drama-filled person. He's not a confrontational person. And neither is my first one for real, but he just used to fucking, uh, him versus him. And that's why, I'm, I'm probably going to do that in a different video. Tell me about my baby daddies, why we not together, why I'm a single mama. But I'll be kind of touched on, it, touched on it in previous videos. But, like, um, yeah, nonetheless, um, back to the whole story. Like back to my whole phase, like it's just, but that is the reasons that push me into being, oh, because I'm not getting attention at home. Nobody is seeing me at home. Like I'm home all the time by myself. Like I just feel like once we had moved out, um, once we had moved to the, the, the to the to the suburbs, like and my mom started working more, and it just, I just, I hated life after after I had her eight. It was fun. Not was lie, I had so much fun, but it's like. Um, it was a lot of, sh I could have gotten myself into a lot of, that's how I know God been covering me all these years. God been with me this whole time. Cause I could be dead. I could be like some of the shit I've done. It's like, girl, where the fuck was your mind at? Like it just goes to show how lost and broken we be. And when I look at these girls on Twitter, I'm like, y'all bitches is lost, but it's not y'all fault. Everybody's looking for love in all the wrong places. I was that girl. And that's why I judge. I'm very judgmental. But it's like, like I told you on the last video, who are we to really judge? Because this, you ain't better than them. You've been through some shit too. Like, but my thing is, I just want to, that's why I'm doing this stuff. So I want to make people aware, like, girl, I've been where you at. And let me tell you the good and the bad. And let me tell you why you need not to do that. Granted, you got to go through certain shit so you can get, build your own wisdom and your own you know, you got to. Because my mom had definitely told me, you know, beforehand, like, she, once I was, you know, once she felt like I was starting to become into boys, and that's when she started having the sex talk. But like I said, I was already molested way before she started talking about sex. That's what she said the other day, like, because I was talking to her and she, I was like, well, I didn't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just, I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to be doing that stuff with that little boy. Like, I just thought this is what you do, like. When you're a kid, you just, and another kid tell you something, you're like, okay. Like, kids are gullible. They're green. Like, they don't know anything. They don't. They only know what they're taught. They only know what they see. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is what you're supposed to do. And then I see my mom and my stepdad, they interact. Like, so I'm like, I, in my mind, because of my molestation with that little boy, it put in my mind that the dynamic between boy and girl is supposed to be sexual. You know, it can be, you can have friendship. The 
Sorry, y'all. I heard something at the fucking door. I'm gonna go. I'm like, who the fuck? <laughs> who the fuck is that? But he was putting something through the door. Um, sprinkler system, scratching and shit. Anyways, um, but like I was saying, I don't even know what I was saying. That's what I'm saying. I cannot stand when I get distracted because I cannot get right back to the point. Um, but basically, yeah, so I just thought that that was the dynamic between boy and girl, whatever. Like, you're supposed to just, you're supposed to just have sex. You're supposed to just hump and fuck and kiss and all that. So, really, it started for me. Like, I've always, like, I just, when I think about it, like I said in the last video, I had a boyfriend in sixth grade. I'm never going to forget him. Like, I still follow him to this day on Instagram. Like, you know, we used to be tongue kissing and all that shit. Like, we used to really be ready, like... It's crazy, and then my mom told me the other, well, she was like, I had noticed she was like, you was like 12 or 13, and I was like, she's fucking. I knew that she was like, I knew you were fucking. Like, I could tell by your walk, your walk had switched. That's why I like, literally, literally, man, it's just crazy how that's what I thought. And I used to have like a bunch of, my mom, nobody used to be home. My house was the house. My house was, oh, y'all come to my house. Like, my mother ain't home. She, now, I don't know where my stepfather was. I think she had left him by that point. Or they was just about to get a divorce or something. I don't know where the fuck everybody was. I really don't. I just be thinking about that now. Where the fuck was everybody at? Like, when my mom came home one time, um, and seen all these niggas in my house. I was in middle school. It was like, I know that summer before high school, that summer before ninth grade, I was going crazy, like, that was when her, yeah, I think that was when her and my, like, my stepfather, she finally kicked him out. So I was loose, like, because that nigga used to be in the way, for real. You just a stay at home, nothing, not helping with the bills. And that's why I don't tolerate that. I don't tolerate moms, because I feel like you, my mama could have been there more for me had your bum ass stepped up. She should have been a stay at home mom with her motherfucking kids. Not your bum ass sitting here playing a fucking game all the time. Granted, I loved my stepdad, you know, because he was the one there. My real dad didn't do anything with me. My stepdad, he did a, he, no, I, he, I was more closer with him. Like, I wouldn't say that he created the best um, experience either for me as a dad, but it was way more than what my dad had done. Like, so I did love my stepfather. Um, but I wanted him to go. I felt like he was in the way. I felt like, you know, all you do is sit downstairs and play the fucking video game. And we always just go to the store and buy you a six pack of them blue, blue bull beers. We always went to the liquor store. We stayed at the fucking liquor store. Um, so, but during that time, once she left him, I know I'm getting off track, y'all. <laughs> once, once she left him, or whatever, like, my friend, we used to, my house used to be the house. Like, me and my friend, um, we used to just have all the niggas come over our house. Like, it was our niggas, like, we went to school with them, but then it was, like, their neighborhood friends, too, that we didn't know. So, we met, we got close with them or whatever through, through our school friends. Because her little, my friend, her boyfriend, um, you know, the niggas that school, you know how I be, and then they got neighborhood friends that's older and all that stuff that drove and stuff. So the older nigga used to bring them around our neighborhood and they used to all be up in my house. It'd be like just us two and then all them niggas in there. But granted, we was not fucking all them niggas. We was only fucking with our dudes, like. And we didn't even really know about sex at this point, like. We was just not really, like you wasn't really having sex, like. You was just humping, I guess, and kissing and all of that stuff and fingering. Yeah, that's what was going on. Um, so that was all, and like that was, I had to be like 12 or 13, because that was right before high school, like, my birthday is in September, so I was, I started high school at 13, and then I turned 14 that year, um, but yeah, it was just, even with that, my mom had came in the house one day and found them niggas in there, we was just talking about this the other day, she was like, them niggas could have ran a train on you, she really thought I was in the room, because when she bust in the room, like, she used to work a night shift, 
Um, and that's when I used to have bring them niggas over my house and stuff. And we used to just turn on the music. We just be partying, like they be, you know, we just be having fun, chilling, talking shit, joning, like. And then me and my friend, we just go off with our dudes, you know. And then the rest of the niggas just stay downstairs. But my mom is right. The niggas could have g'd us. They could have. They could have done anything to us. They did still the other niggas while we was in the room with our niggas. The other niggas was long roaming around the house. They definitely stole my fucking iPod. Like, they definitely stole two of my iPods, actually, because I had that little pink iPod Nano and that white one before that. And they stole both of them bitches. Like, so, anyways, um, you know, I, I was just, like I said, I was having sex young, like that young because of the whole molestation thing. But then, the whole phase ain't really kicking. Because I was cause, like, at that point, I wasn't considering myself a hoe because I was only just talking to that one guy. Um, but before him, I had already had boyfriends and so much, about three other interactions with boys and like two interactions with girls. So it was like just so much by the age of fucking 14. Because by 14, 14 is when I got my first real boyfriend. Um, and he was, he the one who got me pregnant. Like, I told y'all that in the next video, I got pregnant at 14. Like, I literally just started my period. Like, soon as I had, didn't even have a period for two months before I got pregnant. I had just started my period at 14. I got my period late. I got my period. I was the last one of my friends to get my period. And the first one to get fucking pregnant. Like, me and my boyfriend used to be, because he didn't like it at home. He was going through issues at home, too, with his mama boyfriend. So, I'm saying, we, we got to do better as women and just stand with these niggas. You know how much trauma you're doing to your kids by staying with the fuck nigga? And for men, for staying with a woman? Because my uncle, his wife was the, was the fuck woman, like. And not just to say that just because that's my family or this is, you know... It really is his. That my my cousin's mom destroyed the whole thing. That she's still a mess. Like when I see them on Instagram, I'm like she's still a mess. Like you know, but it just goes to show how a toxic mother. Like it just goes to show how the mother. These men gonna be men, but it takes a strong woman that has boundaries, has self worth, self love, and what know what she's willing to tolerate and what she's not willing to allow. She's willing to have those boundaries. Boundaries is key. Because if those, if, if the women had more boundaries and had more love for themselves, we would tolerate less from niggas. And all this tolerating does is put, put damage, in, all it does is damage us more. So it's just like, um, um, I don't get that's why I, I, I carry niggas how I do. I'm not staying with you. I will leave you. All that. Not, not with none of that. But basically, y'all, uh, I know it's like 17 minutes in. I'm just kind of getting to, um, like, I mean, all of it is relative anyway. But basically, so when I was 14, I had a boyfriend, um, and we was together for a while, but he got, he, you know, he was just, he was a trouble kid. I always get the, I always get the hood niggas, like, I never went after hood niggas. They all, it's like I just attracted them. It's like damaged people attracts other damaged people. And that's what it was. I was lonely. He felt like some shit in his house. He used to escape to come to my house. I used to sneak him in my house, my boyfriend at 14. Sneak in Demetrius in it. He used to sleep in my closet and everything. Like, cause he was going through shit at home. And I'm like, come over here. Like, fuck that nigga. Like... I wish you, I wish all y'all would actually beat that nigga ass. I used to hate her, his mother boyfriend just because of my boyfriend. I, and that's how I still am. Whenever my boyfriends tell me something about their parents, don't want it make me not like them. Because it's like, how you going to treat my baby like this? Like, what? But yeah, he used to do that. And I used to just let him come over my house. Like, I sneak him in my house. And we used to skip school sometimes. Like... And he used to always be suspended from school. Like, I met him at school. Like, well, we been, we went to middle, my first, my, my, my high school boyfriend, my first high school boyfriend, we went to middle school together, too. He was, about, he used to be on all the bitches' faces, giving people lunch money and shit. Like, I used to hate that. And, um, but I wasn't his girlfriend either. It was once we got to high school and he moved around my neighborhood. That's what it was. He had moved around my neighborhood at that point. And he, um, you know, we, we started, yeah. And. He took my virginity for real. Because even though I had that little that little hump session with that other boy, he ain't popped my cherry or nothing. Like, you know, that's like I said, the summer before I started high school is when 
I started getting like uh, sexual. I started like, or even been sexual though. But I was in, I'm never gonna forget, boy, I was in my mama bed with that boy. <laughs> like, this goes, I was crazy. Like, I brought the people in my house. Me and him was in my room with the music on. We I mean, wasn't even fucking. I don't know what the fuck we thought we was doing. Nah, that's what I'm saying. I can't wait till my kids think they grown. I'm gonna be like, little girl, you don't even know. You don't even know shit. Y'all don't know what good sex is, little fucking girl. You don't even fucking know. You bitches don't even be fucking having orgasms. You bitches don't know what good sex is. Like, like you little girls don't know shit. And if you're a little girl watching this, you don't know what you're doing. So stop having sex. Because all you're doing is just damaging yourself. Because like my mom used to always tell me, and I'm not gonna lie, she did used to always tell me, boys don't only want you to be your pussy. Like she used to say it just like that. Like, but that's why she said, why would you think that that was okay? Like, why didn't you never tell me? I'm like, I don't know. I thought that was okay for that little boy to do. She was like, to me, and then you know, I didn't talk to you all the time about this. I was like, you talk, you started talking to me about sex way after the fact, after I already been sexual. And then seeing your pictures around, like I haven't seen so many sexual things over, like in such a short amount of time, just by 14. I had already been exposed to so much sexual shit. I see my mom's porn or her, my stepfather porn videos and the thing. I told y'all in the last video, she used to want me to work out and it was a workout tape. So I went in her room to get the tape. And I, when I put, when I pressed the thing on it, in the VCR, it was a porno tape come on. So I was just watching it. I was just watching it like, whoa, wow. Like that, and it's just like a kid watching this shit. Like we were so sexual, we were so introduced to sex way too early. Like a lot of these 90s babies, especially like, we had them shows, the after hour shows with the big sexy stuff come on. But anyways, I know I'm jumping around, but that's just, my brain is just be going like this, like, because it's so much, like, but back to my high school boyfriend, so, yeah, he used to come over and stuff, and I got, ended up getting pregnant by him, but we ended up, um, only reason why we really kind of broke up, broke up was because he went to jail, um, when he was in jail, I was talking to another nigga at my school, um, but actually before he went to jail, I was talking to that nigga, because he wanted my boyfriend wanted to fight the other nigga I was talking to so bad. He was just a fighter because he was angry. So he was angry about what he was going through at home, and that's how I realized most bullies at school they're going through some shit at home. All this shit starts at home. That's why every time I see a kid acting up, I'm like, something's going on with his parents, like or her parents, like it's something, and it is whether you want to admit it or not. When your kid is acting out, once you ask them why are you acting out. Some the kids do not just act out for no reason. Unless they literally were born with that mental illness like that. A lot of times this stuff is developed through the environment in the home, period. But like I said, with him, I had, you know, broke up with him. I mean, we had kind of fell off because he was locked up. I used to write him for a while, but then, you know, it was like, that nigga, it just, you know, just kind of fell off. And then 10th grade is when I met. I used to always go to all the parties. That's what I'm saying. I used to be partying, partying, partying. That's why by the time I got to college, I was partied out, honestly. Like, I was partied out. I had already been partying. Like, my mom was just saying, she was like, I was at the Go-Go's at 12, 11. You was out the Go-Go's and at this, because I'm from D.C., so we, we do Go-Go's. Like, I'm from PG. I was born in D.C., raised in Capitol Heights. And the Capitol Heights is definitely ghetto. As much as I try to act like I'm not ghetto, I'm realizing by watching my videos and my experiences, like, girl, you are ghetto. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm here to accept it. Because I was like, mm, I never wanted to claim the hood because I don't like, you know, them hood people be like, oh, y'all want to be hood so bad, bitch. I don't want to be hood. Like, I don't want to be, but I'm realizing I'm a tad bit ghetto. Um, <laughs> and it's okay. So, um, but yeah, we moved from around Capitol Heights, which is ghetto Maryland, compared to my mama took us all the way to the suburbs. And it really was for my brother. She got us far the fuck away from where we used to live. Like, and that's why I appreciate her so much, though. But a lot of the damage already be done by the time these kids is eight, nine years old. Like, they already getting molded. Like, that's what I'm telling you. Five to 10, five to 12. It's prime time. You got to be on that shit with parenting. Like, 
Those are going to be the most challenging years. And those are the years you got to really be the most attentive to your kids. You got to be the most attentive to them during them years. Because you're really, they're molded. They're being molded. They're being molded on how they're going to feel about you as a parent. Everything. It all matters. That's the, those are the years that they're building their, their self-esteem up. Like, especially by the time they hit. Because by the time they hit high school, they subjected to a whole different field of people. But, um, yeah, so basically when I, um, when, like, I really didn't start hoeing for real like that until college. Like, I had, I had, like, before I, because, like, all right, let me see. So back to 10th grade is when I met my boyfriend. And he was actually one of the dudes. Remember I was telling y'all during the summer before ninth grade, them niggas used to come over my house. He used to be a part of them niggas, but I used to talk to his, his friend, like, and then it's so funny how, but me and his friend, like, it was, like, it was nothing serious enough to, you know, that shit was some young, playful shit. And I only had, used to talk to that boy, like, every so often. Like, he was a real, real, not a boyfriend. He's what you call a situationship man. Like, we call those situationships now. That's what he was, like, it was nothing like that. But his friend, um, that's the one in 10th grade. Um, Zoe, that was my boyfriend. That was my high school boyfriend, too. So, Demetrius and Zoe was the ones I was with in school. And yes, I'm saying they're names because I'm good, but, um, yeah. Um, and, yeah, I still follow them, too. Except not Demetrius, I don't fuck with him, because he, we'll get to that, we'll get to that, that's what I'm saying. It's just a lot, like, <laughs> it's so much, y'all. But I'm just saying this to say, for real, this is why you just... You damage yourself by out here putting yourself into all these different situations. All you do is hurt yourself more. Like, but I was high school on um, 10th grade. I got with Zoe. And I only, and I had got with him because we used to go to this party around their neighborhood, around his neighborhood. Um, every Friday, they used to have a party around here, like a free party. We only parties we used to have was like free parties. Like we call them free parties, like because you in there freaking the lights is out and you in there giving lap dances, you know, pussy popping on a handstand on the wall. Like that's what I'm saying. We was young as shit, knowing about a pussy pussy popping on a handstand. I will show y'all what it is, but I don't got no um pants on right now, so I'm not gonna be popping on the wall. And I'm I'm saving it. I can't be popping on the wall, like, but. But yeah, we used to be doing all that. So that's how I got with him for real. Because every Friday, like, we used to be at that party. Every Friday. Like, they used to have a party. I don't know what was up with his parents. Either. Whoever, the, not, not my boyfriend, but whoever house that was, the parties we used to go to, they used to have a party every fucking Friday. And my boyfriend used to be there every fucking Friday. He was older. He a couple years older than me. So, um, and he, he just... Like I said, I always get the bad boys. I don't know why. Like, he just wasn't in school. He dropped out of school and stuff, too. But like I said, with him, too, issues at home. The mommy-daddy issues. It, it fucks with you. And a lot of these boys, they going through that shit at home. They can't focus in school. Like, so, yeah. I never used to be able to see him at school. But all his friends, my boyfriend friends, like, he, they went to our school. So when I be in school, I used to always be like, nah, nah, you, you know, you, you lose up, this, that, that, I used to be like, eh. but anyway, so yeah, that was my boyfriend up until, and I was with him for four years up until college, and I only cheated on him, I didn't even necessarily cheat on him, um, I cheated on him like one time, um, but it wasn't necessarily cheating, it was like, I think we, I broke up with him because he wasn't trying to do nothing with himself or something. I don't know why I had broke up with him at first. But I, most of the times I broke up with him, it was because he was a bum. And I was getting sick of him not being able to do nothing. Like, you know, it's fun and dandy when you're young and stuff. But as I started to get into college, like, I got with him in 10th grade. So I was with him up until my freshman year of college. I broke up with him that freshman year of college. Because I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm going to school now. Like, throughout this whole time, I had got a car. And, you know, I had started working and stuff. And it was like, you still wasn't doing nothing. So it was like, I had to come driving around to your house all the time. But at first, you know, before I got a car, of course, his older friends, like his friends that drove, um, they used to bring him over my house and stuff. So I used to sneak him in too. I used to always sneak both of them two in. I was like my first boyfriend and then the second one's up. Um, 
So in 10th grade, you know, Zoe stopped coming my house like 10 to 12. Like he stopped coming to my house all the time. I used to sneak him in. My mom only caught him in my house one time. And it was during the day, but he used to spend the night so much, like, and even when my mom was there, she didn't even know he was there. I used to slide him down on the side of the bed, and she knocked on my door. I used to lock my door and stuff, like, and the thing is, because I used to always be home alone, that's why she let me lock my door, because I, like, she, I used to lock my door even when he wasn't there, because I used to be home alone, so I'm scared in this big house by myself, so I locked myself in the room. That's what she always said. You always locked up in that room. And she was just saying it the other day. You used to always be locked up in that room. Everybody used to ask, why to me you always locked up in that room? Because I'm home alone by my fucking self. And I'm scared in this house. So, yes, I'm in this house by myself. Like, I was coming home from school. Once I finished playing outside with my friends, I come in the fucking house and lock the house up and go into my room and lock myself in the room because that's what I feel safe at. So when I had my boyfriend, it was like, she, she's like, Tania always locks her door. So I guess she wasn't really thinking about it was in here. Like, but yeah, so when she, she used to come knock on my door, I used to slide his ass right down on the side of the bed, like, because my bed was by the wall and she wasn't going to come in there. Like, I was just so sneaky. <laughs> I was just so sneaky, but um, basically once I got to college, my freshman year is when I broke out with him, because I'm like, he ain't doing shit with his life, like, I'm going to college now, and you still ain't trying to do shit, so I was like, I can't be with you, so at that point, hold on. Y'all, oh, she being a brat, so I gotta bring her over here with me. Um, she always gonna be on my fucking nipple, y'all. And I can't wait to start breastfeeding. I need to do a video on breastfeeding. Shit, cause she be fucking irritating me. Don't ever breastfeed. They don't tell you the fucking cons of breastfeeding. Um, but that'd be a different video. But yeah, back to what I was saying. So when I got to college and I broke up with him, that's kind of when the whole phase started, for real. Um, Cause like I said, I was pretty loyal to him, except that one dude that I fucked. Um, when me and him, was, when we was, when I was still at home, um, and the reason why I really broke up with him, I said I always broke up with him because it was some bum shit he was doing, or something like that. But I was just so in love. That was my first boyfriend, like you know, I wouldn't say it was my first boyfriend, but he really just was. He was really into me, and young girls, when you're not getting that love at home, when a nigga giving you attention, you love that shit. We, we live for attention, we want attention. I wasn't getting attention at home, so this nigga was giving me all this attention. He always wanted to come see me. He did whatever he did. He snuck in through the kitchen window for me. He would do anything, like he would fight for me. Like he didn't play about me. That's one thing about it, is Zoe did not play about me. Like Demetri isn't even, one thing about it is like they really, I don't know, I can't even call it love, but they really, you know. They wasn't gonna play about me, period. Like, they was gonna fight for me. And, um, yeah. And, oh, that's why we had, we had broke up too in high school because he, we got into a fight one time. He was the first guy that ever put his hands on me, like, in that way. Like, he really pulled my hair out, had a ball spot, whatever. Like, he was just drunk as shit one night. He snuck, and this is what, why, but this is how the fight happened. It wasn't a fight. He beat me up because I was not fighting his ass back. Now I fight niggas back. Ever since him, um, we, we gonna finish talking. This gonna be a kind of long video, y'all. I'm not even about to chop it up. So y'all just need to stay tuned because I just it's a lot. I can't. Even, it's 33 minutes now. I can't. I, can't, I still got more to go. So basically, yeah, me and him, we got into. It was because he came, I told you I used to sneak him in my house. Like, I'm sneaking you in and you coming in, giggly as shit, drunk as shit. Like, because it used to be off the 11, 12, once my mom, you know, or maybe even later than that. Because my mom used to be up sometimes, or she'll be in the basement or whatever. I used to be just so sneaky, y'all. I used to copy down her work schedule because she worked at the hospital. And she worked, she don't have a set schedule, like... Where you know, okay, Monday through Friday, she's gonna be here. She might work at this one, this day, work this shift, this. 
So I used to, she used to keep her calendar in her purse. So I used to write down the day. <laughs> like so calculated with this shit. I used to see which day she was working so I could tell him like, oh, you gonna be, you gonna be good. Nah. <laughs> I was so fucking sneaky, bro. Like, oh my gosh. But that day, that day when he came over my house, and my mom's actually there that night. She was there, of course. She was she was there a lot of the time. She was there, honestly, at night. Um, but he was just snuck in. So that night he was giggling and shit. I'm like, nigga, you gonna get me caught. You gonna get me in trouble. So I started cussing him out. I was just getting mad at him. I tried to put him out. So I made him leave. And I was mad, so I, I started talking shit to him. I was like, you gonna be like your fucking father, this is father, alcoholic ass. I was like, you gonna be like your father, fucking bum. Like, I just, because I was taught how to, I was taught to talk at men like that. Because my mom talked at my stepdad like that, because he was a bum. So I heard her cussing him out like that. And that's why you just gotta get away from this. When you get to the point where you gotta damn talk a man, that means you just need to leave him alone. So that's what I'm learning. Um... And we'll get there. Like, this that's gonna be a different video. Like it's it's really levels to this shit. <laughs> just been through so much. Like I gotta bring y'all from them niggas to the to the I ain't even get to the baby daddies yet. You see what I'm saying? Like I had trauma way before the baby daddies came along. Like eh. but yeah, so um when when, yeah, he was in there drunk and shit, and I put him out, whatever, and I followed him down to the door. He was leaving out. He had called his vibe, whatever, to come get him. Um, he was leaving out, and I was just storming after him. I went outside, too, after him trying to, I don't know what I was doing, but he ended up, I guess I said something that ticked him, and he just started hitting me, like, what, bitch? Like, da 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 like, because I was just so angry with him because he was getting me in trouble. He was still laughing as we was going down the steps for him to leave my fucking house. So I was just mad because I was like, you don't get me in fucking trouble. Like, and for me, I was more scared. I'm more scared of my mom than, than any fucking body. Like, because my mom don't fucking play. Like, that's her ass. We didn't fucking, but she didn't bust my nose before. So I ain't fucking around with her. So I was scared of her, not his fucking ass. Like, but then he beat me up like that outside and pulled my hair out. Like, I had a ball spot. And I was just crying and stuff. I couldn't believe he did that to me. I was like, wow, like, why would you do that? Like, I was just so upset. Like, and then that next morning, I told my mom what happened. And, because she didn't even hear anything. I even came in the house crying, mad and everything and the yelling and stuff. She still didn't wake up. Like, my mom be deep sleep. And that's another story, too. It just goes into also part of feeling why I feel like I ain't never was never protected like all the times that I truly needed protection nobody was fucking there you sleep you don't hear your daughter screaming out for fucking help I could have died out this bitch on a concrete or something you wouldn't have moved to the next morning like it was the next morning when she woke when she finally woke up um, I finally knocked on her door that next morning and the only reason why I told her about him beating me up is because I used to go to the hairdresser every two weeks and I knew my hairdresser was going to tell her that I had a ball spot in the middle of my fucking head. And she was going to ask how you get a ball spot in your head. That's the only reason why I told her. So, yeah. But me and him did end up, I had, like, it was it was a thing. I had press charge on him and everything. Like, like, it was like a whole couple months of just shit. And then, you know, like I said, I used to still go to the parties, like, and everything. I never, um, I never stopped hanging out with my friends and, and the people that he knew too because we we, we ran, ran in like kind of similar areas like same if, if it's a party we all won't end up being there so and that's what it was so it was just like weird being at that for that party like but after a while i think after that party he ended up had hitting me up with something like you know he was real apologetic and honestly after that time he because he had never put his hands on me before and after that time he had never put his hands on me again so we ended up getting back together and he had never put his hands on me again, but I just broke up with him once we got to college. Um, once I got, once, after my first, because my whole first semester of college, I used to come home to see him. That's the only reason why I used to come home. I used to come home just to see him, like, every weekend, coming home just to see him. But I'm like, nigga, won't you come up here and see me? You not doing shit. Like, I be in class. I'm living over here. Won't you come up here and stay with me? I was living in, um... Morgan, you actually, so I actually was with him my sophomore year. It was my sophomore year of college. I finally broke up with him. 
because I was in Morganview and that's why I wanted him to come up there. I was like, shit, you could just stay in my room while I go to class and stuff. Like, because it was um, apartments. So, you know, I had my own space or whatever. I was like, you could come here. He wasn't trying to do that. So I was like, fuck him. I was like, we're not going to be together. And I started getting, you know, I had got my, my best friend. That's why I met my best friend. Cause she was she had moved in that year with us too like moved in more than we was roommates and we started hanging out we started hanging with other type niggas and you know it was just bound to happen when you go to college nine times out of ten you gonna leave behind the people that from your hometown like or you know because i went to college in baltimore and i'm from uh, pg and yeah it's still in maryland but it's not the same at all so don't ever get it like that um, anyways, <laughs> but yeah, so it was just, it was just different. We started hanging out with other guys and then I had started, I'm never going to forget because I didn't break up with Zoe yet. I did cheat on him too with that dude. I'm never going to forget that dude. Uh, that's when my whole face start, started. That nigga, I think his name was Devin or something. I don't even remember. It was Devon. And that's because I'm never going to forget Zoe was calling my phone and I was over that nigga house fucking him. He has a good dick. I was like, oh, this shit better than so like yeah. And you got that real dick. <laughs> it's like that let me stop. Well for real. So that's what started everything. And in that whole them two years in Morgan View, I was meeting different niggas. And most of the times I never fucked with niggas from Morgan. It was always just Baltimore niggas. Um I don't even know how I met a lot of them, honestly. Just being out, because I used to work out there. Like, just being out. I, you know, you just meet people. You go outside, and hey, just meet some damn body. But I should just meet people, you know. But, you know, and I just, that's when my whole phase started. And I was just used to bring niggas in and out of that Morgan View. Like, I was cheating. Me and Brittany. Oh, let me, I'm going to bleep that part out. <laughs> me and my best friend, we used to just be having niggas over to come spark us up. In college, you broke. We was broke college kids. I was living off a refund check. My mom ain't sent me no fucking money. She only sent me money that first year. I mean, that first semester for books. That first time she gave me books and she started me off when she first took me to college and set me up. It was like she set me up and said, to hell with you. Figure the rest out on your own. Use your refund check to survive. And then I ended up getting a job. Um, I used to, and then I, when I was my freshman year of, of college, I also used to go back home to work for the, um, the lady I used to work for. She had her own business. So um, I used to always help her out still because I used to work for her in high school. Um, um, so yeah. That was that, but that was, I used to be fucking some niggas, like, I used to fuck me some niggas. Um, I would definitely say I got about, um, 30, and that's just rounding up. I really feel like it's more like 26, 27, because I definitely remember every nigga I fuck. If I see him right at this, I can, I don't never forget who I got my pussy to, that's one thing about it. And that's why I, I never been a, a dumb, I was, I guess you can say I was dumb. Clearly, I was dumb to be giving my body away like this, you know. But I wasn't no dumb hoe in the sense that I'm going to just be letting niggas drive my car. I'm going to be letting niggas just take my money. My mom did always tell me that. Don't let these niggas drive your car. Don't let me get these niggas no money. Like, so I was never that type of girl who just did that stuff. But I did used to do stuff like for my, um, my, um, that night. Dimitri is my first boyfriend for real. I used to do stuff for him and for Zoe, actually, because they did some fucking, they had shit, like, so I used to get them shirts and stuff, like, but it was my boyfriend, not no niggas, I was just fucking, like, them niggas in college, the whole time, they, they didn't get shit from me, but some pussy, that's all you got, but the thing is, that's worth more than everything, so it's like, you giving up your body and just getting your body count up, and... But if one thing I realized with me having the whole phase is it did teach me, you know, it, it taught me about sex really, like, and that's why the niggas be obsessed. Um, and they love a freak, hold up. That used to be my song, Freak, pal. That's what music like it needs, such an M. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is, and... Yeah, that was my whole phase. And we stopped it, honestly. Like, I had slowed down after a while. Like, 
I done had a shit daddy and some more shit. He used to be my mama age, like, when I was in college, because I needed help. Fuck, I needed help. Nobody was helping me. I didn't have no mother, daddy. Nobody helping me, making sure, you know, and then in, in my junior year, not my junior year, my, um, my senior year of college, I moved into my own apartment with my, um, with another friend. Me and her, we got an apartment together. So I needed help moving into my apartment. So that was my sugar daddy. I met him at Macy's. He used to work. Uh, he's it's, why y'all? Why I actually seen him uh, last year or the year before that working at another furniture store. He used to work in the furniture department at Macy's. He was fine as fuck. Like he still was looking good when I seen him like a year ago. At the um, he was working at the furniture store out in Baltimore. But I met him at Macy's because. He was in the furniture department and I used to work downstairs in the men's and every other fucking part of Macy's. Um, but yeah, I used to fuck with him and he used to be helping me. He used to let me drive his car and stuff, that old man. That could go to old man. But yeah, he was older than me. He was like 50 something years old. He was my mom's age. So my mom, he literally was my mom's age. Like he was literally my mom's age. I was 20, it was under, I was 21 I think, or 20 when I was fucking with him. Um, but honestly, my baby daddies is what stopped my whole face each time. Because once I got with my first baby dad, I was so in love with him. I, I was done fucking with niggas. Like, I was like, oh, I want you. You, you, got to, you seeming like you got it all together. I want you. And he was pursuing me like that. I was like, oh, yeah, this the one. And because I had just went through, when I met my first baby daddy, I had just went through um, I was dealing with this nigga who was lying, like the nigga Jimmy. I'm saying real names, yes, because I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't give a fuck. Um, and none of them niggas gonna do shit because they all would still love to be in my presence. Um, very much so. Period. <laughs> but yeah, so the nigga Jimmy, I used to be fucking with him the whole time. He had a girlfriend. I didn't even know he had a girlfriend. Like, one thing about it is I ain't no side bitch. Never been no side bitch. Never no certified side bitch. If I was fucking with a nigga that had a girl, it's either because he was my old nigga and I just wanted to double back and fuck something that I was comfortable with, or I just didn't know about the bitch. Just like in his situation. I'm like, nigga, I can't, I would never thought you had a girlfriend. You used to come on, because when I first started working at Amazon, um, that's when I started fucking with that nigga Jimmy. And that's also where I met my baby daddy at, Amazon. <laughs> like, Amazon, if y'all ever worked at Amazon, you know Amazon's like a big ass high school, a big college campus, and everybody is fucking in there. And it's just um, like a big ass high school if you've ever worked in one of Amazon's warehouses. So, just know that. Um, but that's why I met the, the dude Jimmy. He had a girlfriend, whatever, and I really was liking him. He was so sweet, like, you know, he was very freaky, like, I love a freak, because I'm a freak, so I love me a freak. And, and it, honestly, to this day, I'm still like that. Like, if the sex not good, I'm not gonna stay with you. Like, I'm sexual, I'm, I'm still, you know, I don't have sex right now, of course, but, um, cause I told y'all I'm celibate, I've been celibate um, since September of 2021. Um, so, but I do, like that's, I just think at this point, because I'm so experienced sexually that I'm not, I don't like boring sex. I like fun, lit sex, like, I like lit sex. And that's why I fell in love with my second baby daddy. But back to Jimmy. So yeah, he had a girlfriend, whatever, and I was fucking with him, and I was really liking him. Um, but once I, once I, his girlfriend, she messaged me one time or something, or somehow, some way, I found out about her because she was stalking him or something, and found out about me. Oh, he has, he has bought me a lipstick from Mac and got it delivered to my house, and I guess. She was in his emails or something. So that morning, this is the morning, that morning, I'm never going to forget that shit, bro. That morning, because he came and spent the night with me. We used to get off work at Amazon, and he used to come to my house. I told y'all I had a thing for bringing niggas to my house. That's because most of the time, these niggas don't got no house. No, if I had my own shit, I'm not coming over here with your fucking mama. Like, I'm not doing that. So you can come to my house. But yeah, that morning we was coming, we was coming early in the morning because we used to work the five to three shift. That bitch was up early with this, waiting for this nigga at the job. Why she was waiting for him at the job, y'all? Like, <laughs> she was waiting for him at the job. And he, we got, we pulled up. She was like, he was like, oh my God, that's, that's her. And I didn't even know about her. I'm like, what? But I'm like, what the fuck? 
So by the time I did, cause you know how it is, when you fuck with a nigga and you don't know he got a girl, by the time you find out he got a girl, you easy into the nigga, so you're not about to just easily let him go like that. So I still was fucking with him a little bit. Um, but but um, after that, like after that situation, that's when I think I had found out about her. I'm like, what the fuck? So you've been lying this whole time. So not only do he got to fight with his girl, calm her down. Once he finished with her and we go into work, because I had just went on into the building. I didn't know, really know what was going on like that. But once he told, once he uh, told me everything, and then she she messaged me saying, um, "I'm his girl." I'm like, "Well, bitch, I didn't know about you, girl. I didn't know he was coming home with me after work and shit, taking me out to eat and shit. We went to the movies and shit. Like, we was doing all of that. So I'm thinking this nigga can't possibly have a girl. Cause when are you finding time to talk to her when you've been coming over my house for a whole month fucking straight, being with me? So it's like I didn't know, did not know." Like, so that was the only time I guess I was really a side bitch that I knew I was a side bitch anyway. Like, so, yeah, y'all, with that, right after him, I was like, I'm over niggas. Like, he was, he was fun too. He was freaky. He was picking me up. I love a nigga that picked me up. He picked me up. He, I, even at work, we used to be at work. I come in in the morning because he would be there before I get to work. And if, um, if they already get to their stations and stuff, because you know, if you work at Amazon, everybody be at stations. So, uh, good, she going on back in the room by her business. Please don't come back. <laughs> she going back, back in her business. But, now we come in, he would, now he see me coming in. And this is, yes, because after the fact of all of that, because once I found out about his girlfriend, I was like, oh, I ain't fucking with you. You a liar. And all this. So I stopped fucking with him like that. But we were still kind of cool at work. And, you know, of course, because we had sexual relations, you know, it was still kind of like a little something there. Like, we were still cool, though. Um... And one this one day he just picked me up like that. He just picked me up because he used to be doing some shit in my house. Like his little freaky ass. I love me a freak nigga. <laughs> like, but he when I um came to work that night that after all of that commotion with with the girl finding out, she ain't never leaving. Of course, you know bitches don't go nowhere. They, they don't care. They just want you. Well, you mine. I'm not leaving you. I'm not gonna let that bitch have you. Um, weak assholes. Um, me bitch. Let me let me find out. We, 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 first of all, for me not to leave you, we gotta be married. We gotta have some real investments together. Like, that's why Jaden and Will not leaving each other. When you got real investments with a motherfucker and real shit besides just kids, like, people be acting like, oh, kids is the lock me down to, no. Nigga, you, 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 you wanna keep disrespecting me? You get left, period. I don't play that. I don't play that. Cause you can be single, that way you can have any bitch you want. You're not gonna keep me right here while you think you gonna and be bringing me back diseases and BV and shit. Like, you know, and throughout this journey, that's why I'm telling y'all, like, you don't, you don't need no whole phase. You get fuck around and catch diseases and shit. I done had chlamydia twice, having a fucking whole phase. Like, I had chlamydia twice and I had trichomonas once. I think it's called trichomonas, it's called trick. And one time I had trick and chlamydia. That second time I had chlamydia, I had chlamydia and trick at the same damn time. I was like, damn, that's nasty. That's why I don't play that shit. I don't see how y'all bitches be okay with sharing niggas and all that willingly, knowingly. Like, I ain't sharing no dick with you bitches. Not my dick. He's supposed to be my nigga. He out here fucking you raw and bringing me back shit. No, that's, that's a negative. You don't ever do that. Nigga burn you and, and then he come and do it again. And again and again, he just keep bringing you. Gotta keep. You should not have to keep putting no popping no pussy pills and putting boric acid up your vagina, like and doing all that stuff. Fucking with a nigga. That's how I always know when a nigga is doing fucking off. I always know that because when my both of my baby daddies, when I be with both my, when I, since I've been with both my baby daddies, I don't have those issues. Like when I'm in monogamous relationships, long term relationships, I don't have those issues unless they cheating. Cause you all know, all of a sudden, I've been fucking you all this time. I don't never had no uh, BV and stuff. Now all of a sudden, as soon as we fuck, now I'm getting BV and that's because bacteria sits at the tip of their dick. They stick a dick in her and they come stick a dick in you. Her bacteria is still on the tip of that nigga dick. Like, in the inside in that little hole, it's in there. Like, that's why I don't, I don't, I don't share, I don't share dick willingly. Like, 
you mind fuck off, go do that shit. But you ain't bring that shit to me because I'm not about to keep having a fishy pussy because you have to keep doing all this itchy, itchy pussy. Ain't nothing worse than an itchy pussy, period. If you never had one, you don't want one. So don't be out here fucking these niggas. Uh, and you know he out here fucking her and fucking her and fucking her and fucking her and coming back and fucking you. No, that's that's not loving yourself. That's not respecting yourself. Like, don't, don't make the same mistakes I made. I did this whole video just to say, don't make the same mistakes I made. Don't do it. It's not fucking worth it. You be selling your soul for real. And then we wonder why we damaged, broken. When we finally get a good one, we don't even know. We can't even trust them. Because look at all of the, look at the history. Look at the history. Like, we just used to niggas doing this and doing that. So it's like, you don't even know how to appreciate a good one when you really get them. And that's how I felt with me and my first baby dad. I'm like, that's why I was so, I, I feel like I was only truly, like, with real love. Because I met him at 21, like, right after the nigga Jimmy. I'm sorry I be jumping around, y'all, but right after the nigga Jimmy, like, that's when I, like, met my baby dad, like, because we all worked together. And, well, we all worked at Amazon. Like, they didn't know each other or nothing. Um, but we worked it, and that's how I met my baby dad, because I had just finished with that shit with Jimmy, and I was just chilling. And niggas used to be biting at Amazon. Niggas used to be horny everywhere. Anybody that looked like pretty or something. I ain't had no ass. I still had no ass to room, but niggas just be, I don't know. But that's how I started sucking my baby father, and then he scooped me up. That nigga, I was, I was out of the game after that. I was like, oh, he got his own place. He got a car. I wasn't used to niggas having none of that. Like, used to these niggas being bum bums and with their moms, on this, on that. He was 25 and had his own shit. He had a nice job because he was working at Amazon, but he didn't work for Amazon. He worked with the engineering people, um, with, the, um, with the Kiva machines. Like, he used to fix the machines in there and stuff, basically. Like, so I was like, oh, you a, yeah, and you getting paid, you know, you getting some, some coin, like, you know, you got your own place when he first, and he asked me out, and then he was like, can I take you out to dinner or something like that, I think he said, with a lunch or some shit like that. So, that weekend, we had, we had went out, and it's so funny, because I was texting him, I was still fucking with Jimmy a little bit, when I had started, uh, when I started talking to James, my baby daddy. But once I um once I started fucking with him, I was like, I ain't fucking with your ass no more, Jimmy. You're dead. You wanted to not not fucking with you. Cause you know, like I told you, I was still fucking with him a little bit because I mean I could, it was hard to just cut it off and you know, but I limited you can't come up my house no more, but we used to, used to still just chill sometimes or whatever. Um, but I met James and that's when, after we went out that first time, me and James, I said, fuck you, Jimmy, going back to your girlfriend. I got me a real nigga. <laughs> got me a real one that don't got a whole girlfriend. Like, cause I was with James and when I first came to his house and we just moved so fast. But that's gonna be another video. Cause this video is an hour long, you guys. So I'm gonna do another video with how I met my baby daddies and why we broke up. Um, because they all play a part into who I am now, why I'm in Texas. They play a big part, especially the second one. He play a big part into why I'm in Texas. And it's some real shit I tell y'all. Because we as women, we got to we gotta protect ourselves and protect our children by all means necessary. Just understand that what you do as a parent affects your kids. And if you want to be sitting up in a nursing home when you old, rotting to death. Because that nigga guarantee you. Most of the time, your man is not going to be there right by your side when you're old and scrambled up. Your kids is going to be the one that's there for you. So that's who really matters the most. Fuck these niggas. Fuck these bitches to the men if you if it's any men watching it. Fuck the, the girls. Like Wallow say, stop chasing pussy. Y'all be chasing pussy, neglecting y'all kids. But when you old and you sick and down and out, them bitches ain't going to be nowhere because they looking for a good time. A lot of girls is looking for just a good time, too. I was that girl. I'm looking for just a good time. I don't want you niggas. That's all the niggas I used to fuck in college. I knew I didn't want them niggas. Like, and honestly, with my baby daddies, I wasn't planning to want them, especially the second one. I was not planning. You were supposed to be a good time. But see what that whole shit get you? Just looking for a good time, just casual sex. It gets you with babies. It gets you, you put you in situations where your kids can be hurt. Like, that's another video. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do that video later on today. Um, 
or maybe tomorrow. But I just want to say the whole phase, like you don't need no whole phase, baby. Look what being a hoe got me. I mean, I'm good now, but I'm a single mom. Um, and it ain't even, I'm not a single mom necessarily because I was a homeless single mom because I don't stay in nothing that's not benefiting me. But once again, I realized, and me getting with the Bible and learning about this Jezebel, I think that shit's so funny. He called us the Jezebel spirit. And it is a Jezebel. That's what Tony Gaskins, uh, he taught me about the Jezebel spirit. Like, me, me getting close with, me learning, um, me finding Tony Gaskins and, you know, being put in his path, he really have helped me so much with just maturing as a woman and learning my self-worth. And I recommend all of you guys to go follow Tony Gaskins and R.C. Blakes Jr. because they are some phenomenal men and they educate women on how to be better and what to look out for for men. And it's just sad though that we have to constantly be looking out for things for men when they should just be better men. But unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. Men are naturally created to be selfish beings. Their men are not meant to be alone. That's why they're also so promiscuous and um, they're not meant to be alone. Men are supposed to have a woman. That's what God created Eve for. Because Adam could not be here alone. That's why he created women. So, I just want to let y'all know, like, being a hoe can cause you to put yourself in a life or death situation. You can be dead. Meeting up with these niggas. Letting them run trains on you. It, it brings your, your self-worth down. Brings your value down. You know, it really does. It make you feel low about yourself. It will. It brings your self-esteem down. You gotta learn to respect yourself and respect your body. Your body is a temple for real. And that's why now I don't I don't engage in the sex. The more I've dealt with shit and the more I see what sex does, like niggas get addicted to my sex too. And I'm like, nigga, do you really love me or you just love my pussy? Like you these niggas be loving the sex. And that that I guess that'll be in another video. That'll be in the next video when we talk about that. Because I'm saying, I still got to tell y'all. I still got to tell y'all some things. <laughs> like, because honestly, um, my last three dudes, my last three niggas, which was my two baby days and then the one that was in between them, my situation shit. They the ones who really, like, made the most impact on me with knowing my work. They the ones who first made me realize, like, girl... No, and you got daughters now. No, like, do you want them to be a hoe like you? No, like, I'm a hoe like my mama, and she be trying to act like, but you was a hoe. But you be telling me just like me. I just realized, like, you always say it. Like, she be saying, like, my my dad, my dad is fucking old. Like, he was your sugar daddy, and you had a baby with him to to keep that bag coming in. He was helping you with your son, and you ain't had no father. You had left his father, because his father was abusive. So, you was, you know, she just getting money from men. The same thing. Uh, a Jezebel that trained up a Jezebel. And I'm not training up no more Jezebels. My daughters will not be Jezebels like me and my mama. That shit ends here. When I tell you I'm breaking every last generational curse that's been put onto my bloodline, from wholeness to financial brokenness, to bad credit, to all that. I'm breaking every last single fucking curse. Mock my words. And I owe it all to God. I'm so thankful for God. Love your bodies. Protect your bodies. Know your worth, baby, man. Because all it does is bring you down. It's about how you feel. It don't matter what the world, like I keep telling you, it don't matter what the world think about you. It matters how you feel when you alone, at home, by yourself. Like, when you really to yourself. That's what really matters, how you feel. Do you feel low? Do you feel happy? you feel proud of the things that you've done? No, we all made mistakes, of course, but, you know, it's just a learning lesson. You just have to do better and really want better. You don't settle for nothing. You don't got to settle for shit in this world. You don't. You can have, have whatever you want. Right. You don't have to tolerate that. Don't just be giving me a body. Like, yeah, sex ain't fun. But once you have it so much, and once you, I, I don't know why, because once you actually get to the point where you have good sex, like, like, very good sex, where you actually are coming, like, a lot of you bitches are not doing, so stop fucking. You're not even having an orgasm. What are you fucking for? 
Like, that's when it started getting me irritated. I'm like, I'm not. Sex had started to become so pointless. Like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I only like big dicks because I can, that's the only thing that's penetrating. But even with that, I wasn't nothing. Like, only, I only had, out of 30 niggas, like I told you, I rounded up to 30. Um, out of 30 niggas, only a handful had made me nut. Like, and none of them have made me nut from sex except my baby daddy, the last baby daddy. That's what kept his ass around. Cause that's, we just had some phenomenal freaky sex. I told y'all I'm a freak, I like freaky sex. And we had some freaky sex, shower, we be doing it all. Like, we try to see going viral with Megan, my baby daddy was living, that nigga be, uh, uh, lifting me up like party was going with Megan. That's how I was in love, I was like, and that's another video. <laughs> I'll say that for the next video. So until the next time, you guys, I really just hope y'all take something from this. Like. I'm not perfect. I'm not judging y'all, but I am judging y'all because once you know better, you got to do better. And that's just period. I love y'all still. You know, I just want better for my women. I want better for my men. I just want better for the black community as a whole. Like, I really just want better for us. I want better for our children. I want to save the children. I don't want no loan. Like, I don't, it's too many kids that's broken. Like, look at what the brokenness is doing to us. Like, look at what it's doing. Like, that's why we got to take our roles as parents serious. Stop letting your kids see so much sexual things. I mean, of course they need to see intimacy between the parents. Kissing and all that is fine. Smacking butts. You know, you're going to be intimate so your kids know what, uh, you know, but they don't need to be seeing sexual things. If you do porno and you're a man or a woman, don't let your kids find that shit. Like, they don't need to be introduced to sex before they need to know. Because they become curious and then they'll try that shit on their own friends. Like that little boy did to me. Whatever was going on at home with him, he came and started to making me do that shit to him. You know? Like, and what I'm doing. I'm getting around my little friends. Like, with me and my little girlfriends, we playing house. Me and them over there butt up, rubbing and licking and stuff. So it's just like, it's just such a ripple effect. I just really want better. Like, I really want better. And whatever I can do, I'm going to do to ensure that anybody that's my, my kids and any of their friends, that's why I just want to be that that example and I want to be that role model, you know, for my kids. I can't let them just see anything because what they see is what they believe is right. No matter what you're telling them, they're going based on what they see. That's why I, with my mom, I never cared about all the shit she didn't tell me. Oh, niggas only gonna want you for your pussy. Don't get your pussy away. They only want you for the pussy. I'm like, girl. They already didn't pay pause to me. Like, she just was null and void by that point. And me seeing her deal with Elaine, it made me think, okay, stay with your bum ass boy. That's all, but she didn't like my boyfriend, though, because his bum ass, he's a bum. I was like, girl, your husband is a fucking bum. I said, I used to say, all you care about is a man money. We be talking about that all the time. Now I understand why she cared about money so much. Because, you know, I'm the I'm the same way, nigga. I got these bills. I got these kids, nigga. The fuck you mean? You ain't coming fucking this pussy, this sweet, good pussy here. This good shit here. You think you gonna just do nothing for it? No, boo, boo. This is an experience. This pussy is a knockout. I knock niggas out with this pussy. So you don't get to just get it and don't do nothing in return for me. So that's another video. Um, before I put, I might just like, I don't know. Cause it's just a lot. But my whole phase is over basically. I'm done with that shit. I'm done giving my body away to niggas. Even my own baby daddy just can't fuck me. My first baby father, he ain't been able to fuck me since. And of course he didn't try. He still be sitting, like just yesterday, sitting like, why are you sending me pictures? Oh, he, he, the message said, what the message said, Oh, um, this this was from last month, but put this in Lonnie's photo album. Say Lonnie is my daughter. So, so put this, it's pictures, this three pictures with him and a group of people. One per, one picture is him and his friend. The other picture is uh, him and some niggas and two girls. Why do my daughter need these photo albums? What he wanted me to see was how fly and good he was looking in the picture. Like, he don't know, I, 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 I'm the queen of mind games. And one thing about my baby father is I don't care who he dealing with. That nigga really was in love with me because I really was really, really solid with him. And he know, you know, we both were just young. And I think we fucked up with each other for real because 
I already know my issue is the way I talk to men. I told y'all, uh, you know, I was raised and seen that. Like, my mom talked to my stepdad like this. So I thought that was how you're supposed to talk to dudes. Like, you know. And I realized, too, they be liking when you be mean. It's like, you be nice, they take advantage of you. You be mean, put your foot down, all of a sudden they want to do this and do that. So it's just, they're fucking weird in themselves. But, well, that's what I'm saying. You just just be... Y'all need to be careful with these baby daddies. Especially if y'all are the girlfriends of a nigga with a baby daddy, with a baby mama. It don't always be her. Like, look at these niggas. Like, what do you say to me that for? Why do your daughter need that in her photo album? She don't even have a fucking photo album. You just saying shit. You just wanted me to see your picture, sir. And don't be trying to get in good because you know you coming down here, coming down here for Father's Day. Like, it's giving nothing. Don't think you about to come down here and it's giving nothing because it's giving very much nothing. Don't think I'm coming to y'all hotel. You're going to get your daughter and go to your hotel. It's giving nothing. I haven't had sex with that nigga since 2019. And it's giving very much nothing. And I ain't had sex with her dad since last year. It's giving very much nothing for him, too. He is dead. And that's in another video. So until the next time, you guys, I'll see you. Stop the whole shit. You don't need no whole phase because all it does is bring your value down. And that's that on that. You don't need no whole phase. You want to learn how to be freaky and learn how to do all these freaky things to please your man experiment with his one ass like and that's it and a lot of times we gotta realize being young you're not most times you're not staying with that nigga forever so just be be you know be cautious of that but don't be out here just having casual sex give me a body to niggas because a lot of these niggas out here these days is on the down low they experimenting just trying to see what they want what they don't like what they don't want they just killing time they using you as a rebound like all these bitches that my baby daddies get with they, you, you bitches be rebounds. And then you be mad when he's still doing all this stuff with his baby mama. And that's why that's this baby mama hate train. Because you bitches be mad. Like, and don't be the girls. Like, and don't be the baby mamas. Y'all know these niggas play both sides. And y'all still want to play dumb. So if you want to play dumb, don't be crying when you get your feelings hurt. And don't be stalking my page. And don't be fucking coming to me woman to woman. Because you can't come to me woman to woman about a nigga that was mine first, bitch. Period. I don't care what y'all is now. You can't come to me woman to woman. But nobody that was mine first. And that's just what it is. So, until next time, you guys. I just hope you guys be smarter. Be better than I was. Um, I'm going to keep trying to encourage you guys. And just tell y'all. You know, I'm just real with my shit. I don't give a fuck. Because <laughs> I don't. Everything I've been through made me who I am today. And like I always say, I'm not that person now like I wouldn't allow those things now you can't try me now on that type of stuff like I'm not so vulnerable and gullible and naive and desperate now so I'm not just gonna allow certain shit you know I'm not codependent on men anymore I used to feel like I used to be codependent I not, never had to necessarily be up under nobody 24 7 because that's just not my style but you know, I'm a, I'm a need company sometimes. Like, now, I'm just like, I don't be wanting they ass. Like, I literally just don't even want to be bothered. I'm so focused on my building, my goals, my dreams. I don't have time to be bothered. And, like, a lot of times, I feel like as women, we put ourselves last and we put our hopes and dreams and, and goals on the back burner until we fucking get burnt in a relationship. Now we want to get back focused. So, it just be a big distraction. But anyways, y'all, I'm going to try to go put her down for a nap. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next.